This is an extract from my story, Letters, set in New York. I walk on Tuesday along Avenue of the Americas. Matty's letter is a comforting papery wad in my pocket. I haven't carried a handbag since a dirty-faced girl dragged me to the ground, trying to pull it from my hands. My legs got scraped, but the little bitch didn't get my bag. She hadn't reckoned on the strength of an Irish mother. These days I carry all my bits and bobs, money, hanky, keys, in my pockets like a man. The avenue is throbbing as it always is with hucksters and madmen and ordinary people doing ordinary things. Shopping, arguing, hurrying. I've never known such a place for haste. I'm glad to leave the busy avenue for the Washington Square diner. My back is clammy with sweat when I push open the door. It's cool inside. Vito is waiting at the window his behind lapping over the sides of a high stool like rising dough. Bridie, he says, getting down off the stool. When will you be my bride? He kisses my hand and leads me into my booth. Vito, like I tell you every week, I've been up the aisle once already and that was enough for me. I smile. You break my heart, he says, and claps his meaty hands across his chest. Vito is fat, fatter than me, and he already has a wife. And how is your son, Bridie, he says. I have his letter right here. I pull it from my pocket. Vito takes the letter and fingers it. He stares at the sealed envelope, the stamp, my address and Matty's, as if it all might tell him something. So many words, so many letters, he says, and hands it back to me. My apartment is warm, but not as heavy as the street. I switch on the air conditioning. It bangs and thrums, so I switch it off again. One less noise in the city's din. I warm up some tortellini that Vito has given me, but they are dry and salty in my mouth. I drink a cup of milk to loosen up my tongue. It tastes good, cold and creamy like the milk back home. Taking the envelope from my pocket, I slit it open with the blade of a scissors. There is money, of course, and this time a photograph. I put the dollar bills into my pocket and study the picture. There is Matty, moon-faced and smiling, stouter now than when he left. His arm is draped across the black wife and she is grim and thin, holding a baby across her breasts. Is this a son? My grandson? They are standing at a railing by the sea. There is writing on the back of the picture. I study the curls and squiggles. I see M for Matty. I know B makes the start of Bridie too. I unfold the letter. Pouring over each sheet in turn, I run my finger under the lines, trying for letters and words. When I reach the end of each page, I toss it over my shoulder, out the window to the street below.